Hello friend, Nathan here, and I'm gonna play something for you, and I want you to pay really close attention and see if you can pick out the melody of this tune. There's a lot going on in here, and the melody is definitely getting a little lost, so if you didn't catch it, let's try it again. Did you hear the difference there? I didn't change any notes, but the melody was popping out of the mix a lot more clearly. If you're still struggling to hear it, here's the melody by itself so you know what you're listening for. Then we'll rewind and listen one last time back to those two different playthroughs. second playthrough really improves the perceived quality and overall sound of my arrangement because the melody is punching through the mix. It's rising above all the other notes so that it can truly be heard and have its intended impact on my audience. Guitarists have this tendency to treat all notes equally rather than paying attention to the specific role that they play in the bigger picture of a piece of music. Especially if you're just reading tabs, you're literally just seeing frets and strings rather than melodies and harmonies and bass lines. All notes are not created equal. The melody is what your audience remembers. And if it's not coming out in your performance, then all those other notes and fancy arpeggios are only hurting your arrangement. A good arrangement performed poorly might as well be a bad arrangement. So I'm gonna show you how to improve your arrangements without changing a single note, but by simply honing this little technique that will help your melodies really pop. Now real quick, if you haven't yet tackled making your own classical or fingerstyle guitar arrangements, or if you're looking to improve your abilities, uh, go to my website beyondtheguitar.com or follow the link in the description to take my free training fretboard freedom where I teach you how to find and play chords anywhere on the fretboard. So if you're trying to play melodies and chords simultaneously all over the neck, which is really a necessary component of making fingerstyle guitar arrangements, then you need to learn this and I teach it to you for free. So go check that out. Uh, but let's dive into this technique. Making your melodies pop is all about developing the control in your right hand to be able to play certain strings louder than others, which sounds super simple, but it's definitely easier said than done and it's gonna take some practice, especially if you're playing a complex passage with a really busy accompaniment like the example I gave before, it can be really tricky to make sure that you're playing louder with the fingers that are playing the melody and softer with the fingers that aren't. So to develop this technique, I want you to start out with this super simple drill that's gonna allow you to focus entirely on your right hand. We're just gonna take an E minor arpeggio on open strings, ascending and descending like this. Your right hand fingering is P, I, M, A, M, I. Now you're gonna take turns emphasizing different notes as if the melody was falling on that string. So you're gonna play one string louder than the rest and I want you to exaggerate that contrast. So play that one string really loudly and then intentionally play all the other strings very soft. Exaggerating that contrast really helps reinforce that technique and helps develop that control. Let's start with the high E string played with the A finger since our melody is more often than not gonna be the highest note. So you're gonna repeat through this arpeggio four times and every time you play your thumb, your I and your M fingers, play them softly. Then your high E string with your A finger, I want you to play really loudly and then back down softly with the other fingers and repeat. You wanna make sure that you're maintaining good tone on that loud note and not just ripping up the string 
any way you can. So what I'm physically doing here to play that note loudly with good tone is all in the preparation. Right before it's time to play that finger, I plant it on the string and physically push that string down deeper in toward the body than the other strings, then release. That produces a louder note with a nice well-rounded tone. After you've played through the arpeggio four times emphasizing the A finger, you're gonna do the same thing now with your M finger. Right, repeat that four times, then the same thing with the I finger. You notice that contrast, really emphasizing that one note. Finally, four times with the thumb. Now there are also scenarios where we have to bring out a melody note that's being played within a block chord rather than an arpeggio. So to practice that concept, we can take those same strings but play them all together simultaneously as a block chord rather than arpeggio. You'll find this even more challenging, especially when the note that you're trying to emphasize is on an inner string, but the same principles apply when practicing this. Plant all your fingers on their appropriate strings in preparation to pluck the chord, but push the one finger that you're emphasizing in deeper than the others, then release them all. Because you're hearing all the strings at the same time now, it can be kind of hard to tell if you're successfully bringing out the right note that you're trying to emphasize from the mix. So what I recommend for this is every time you're about to start the drill and emphasize a new string, play that string by itself a few times to get that note in your ear so that you'll be more tuned in to that specific note within the mix when you're playing the drill and, and playing all the strings all together. Now you know by now I'm a big advocate for taking sections of real music and turning those into drills rather than practicing countless boring exercises, uh, but for the sake of this technique and introducing it, it really does help to start with this simple exercise so you can focus entirely on the right hand uh, instead of being distracted by whatever's going on in the left hand in the music. Um, that being said, as you develop your technique and as you get better with this exercise, then you can start to explore the technique in the context of your own arrangements uh, or pieces of music that you're playing. Or if you're feeling really brave, you can tackle the advanced example that I was giving at the beginning of this video, which is an excerpt from my Light of the Seven arrangement. So the tabs and sheet music for that little example are available for free on my website. Again, the link in the description below. So incorporate both elements of this drill in your daily practice and you'll add so much depth to your arrangements and playing without changing a single note. I always tell my students, this is the musical equivalent of the difference between two-dimensional and 3D. If you're playing all notes equally at equal volume, your arrangements and your performances are gonna be flat and uninteresting, but when you take your melody and you play it louder than the accompaniment and you really bring it out, you add this beautiful space in your arrangement and you create this illusion of multiple guitars playing these different musical lines. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you haven't, make sure you go to beyondtheguitar.com or follow the link below to take my free training, Fretboard Freedom, to get started making your own guitar arrangements. If you did enjoy the video, hit the like button to let me know and to help more people see it. Make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on so you never miss future videos. And as always, much love and I'll see you in the next one.